Welcome to Stockholm. My name is Elisabeth Daudé and I am an official qualified tourist guide of the city of Stockholm. And I today have the possibility and the pleasure to show you Stockholm, my city. Stockholm was founded officially in 1252, but most likely there were people around even before that. And we'll have a look at why. We'll also see different sections of the city and explore a bit of Stockholm of today. Right behind me you see the island of Djurgården. On the other side, a very large island. Beneath us is the Baltic Sea. And you will frequently during the day see many of the ferry boats that go between the different islands, connecting the islands, making it possible for people to go from one place to the other without using public transportation as a bus or the subway or um, using their own car. They can just take the boat, as you can see beneath us here. Stockholm is composed of 14 different islands and mainland. Uh, you will, if you look further to the left, see colorful houses, a silhouette of beautiful colorful houses. Those belong to Old Town Stockholm, which we will explore. Old Town is where it all started, 800 some years ago. It was a trading city. It was where people came to sell and to purchase. And it continued as a trading city all through modern times, actually. Nowadays, trade is done online. Stockholm has many sites, and we will see some of those sites later on. But I'd like to just show how Stockholm has different heights as well. We're standing on a high hill here, about 35 meters or so above sea level, uh, and that makes the city so attractive. Another thing which makes it very beautiful is the fact that we have many open spaces, as you can see behind me, open spaces marked by the water, and parks, gardens, and even forests right in downtown. A third factor which is important for Stockholm is the light. Just look at it today. The city is lit up, we have bright colors, we have the blue water, we have the color for houses which you see in the background, we have the blue sky. And even when it's clouded, Stockholm still has something very particular. It's called the Northern Light. You can only find it up here. Welcome to Old Town Stockholm. We have now arrived here in the center, in the heart of Old Town, where it all started once upon a time. And this is one of the many squares of Old Town. This here is the Burn Square, as they call it, because a building that stood here once burned and they decided not to rebuild it. We have details, beautiful details, but also the whole intact Old Town, which is still alive and still is inhabited by many people. And let's explore. When I was little, this was one of the favorite spots in Old Town when my mom took me here. It happened every so often that she wanted to show me history and I have always been interested in history. Uh, and here I could really feel it all the way through. You look at the buildings here. These are 18th century facades, usually colored in warm colors, as you can see here, which was quite typical for the time. We had an architect who had a very important position. He traveled to both Italy and to France and brought back those colors to Stockholm, which was a city where everything basically had been gray. And he made it mandatory to paint buildings in warm colors. I'm quite thankful for that, I can tell you. Today, Old Town is inhabited by up to 3,000 people in beautiful apartments, which since have been restored. Obviously, it's quite small. Uh, to live in uh, one of those apartments, but it must be a privilege to feel history the way you can do here. We have arrived at the rune stone here. 
Just look at it. This is the oldest testimony of human existence in Old Town. I'm sure there's been before, but this is a real runestone dating back to the, uh, well, to before the 10th century. Um, we do see the letters up here, and it says Torsten and Frögun erected this stone in honor of their son. We don't know who they are. The stone with a snake on it that you can see as well was actually found as a doorstep in one of the buildings here. It's once upon a time it stood up where two roads crossed. That's how the Vikings honored the people that had disappeared without them knowing where they had gone. The Vikings were seafarers. They sailed from one place to the other. They're the ones actually giving reason for Stockholm's existence because them trading made Stockholm a trading town in the very beginning. So it's wonderful that this stone here has been found and can witness to human existence in this area here as much as maybe 1200 years ago or so. This is Main Square Stockholm, in Old Town that is, uh, the area which probably had a very important significance at the time uh, next to the Royal Palace where politics were executed, next to the church which showed the predominant religion. This is where trade was represented and this is where people negotiated, they brought goods, they purchased goods. It's also where political declarations were given and it was a place for gathering. Most of the more important citizens of Stockholm would have lived around here. Behind myself you can see uh, the orange building, the green building, the red building. Those must have been inhabited by most important citizens of Stockholm at the time. And now we're standing next to the Royal Palace of Stockholm. Sweden is a monarchy. We have King Carl Gustav, who's the head of state, and uh, he has his office and receives officials over in this building, which you see to your left. Uh, it's a building which was finished in 1754. They're at present renovating the facade. So it's a building which is actually used every single day uh, as a, um, an official building for the monarchy. The Royal Palace is open to the public. You can actually go inside, visit the rooms and halls and see beautiful tapestries as well as furniture. Uh, at the Royal Palace is where the uh, change of the guards takes place several times a day as well. I would now like to introduce you to one of Stockholm's most impressive landmarks, Stockholm City Hall, which you see just behind myself. This building was constructed during 12 years, 1911 till 1923. You can see just by the time I'm mentioning that it is the time when you build in Art Deco, but there are many other styles inside the building as well, so let's call it eclectic. It is a building where we find various purposes being served. We have Stockholm's municipal government inside, we have a lot of administration, we have the marriage room uh, for civil marriages, that is. Uh, we do have uh, the local parliament, the local council, and we do have two big halls which are used for various festivities. The most famous one being the Nobel festivity, the Nobel banquet, which is housed inside on December 10th every year and December 10th is known to be the day of death of Alfred Nobel, the famous inventor who gave his capital to 
humanity, to humankind, people who had served humanity by inventing or discovering important things. The prizes are given in Stockholm Concert Hall. Afterwards, the party is held in here. The building is such an incredible building with all the different details you find inside. And just by looking at the sleek lines from over here, we can understand that it is of major importance. It is inspired by the Doge Palace in Venice and maybe gives reason to the name Stockholm, the Venice of the North, the city on the water. But now let us leave the Old Town area and move to a modern section of the city, the sustainable area of Hammarby Sjöstad. We're taking the ferry boat and we'll see how Stockholmers of today may live. Now we have reached Hammarby Sjöstad, a newly developed uh, area, the sustainable area of Stockholm, probably the most uh, well-known one. It started as an idea in 1995 when we were applying for the uh, Summer Olympic Games in 2004, which later on would go to Athens. The idea was that we needed something special on the agenda and they said why not make it a sustainable Olympic village. This is the village. We never got the Olympic Games as you know but the village was planned. And it's all about traffic. Look back there, the transport means, you can see back there is the tram. We also just rode the ferry boat and there are buses going here as well. So as little as possible using your own car. A lot of the inhabitants here bicycle as well. We're now right in the middle of one of the building complexes. You can see this is an ideal area for young families to live, uh, but also for all kinds of people because you can walk and there's no traffic at all. Uh, so people quite enjoy being out here, both uh, in summer and in winter time. Um, this water here is actually rainwater, which is collected, which later on goes out into the uh, Baltic Sea. Many of the buildings here have balconies. That's one thing people strive for these days, to be able to have a balcony. Uh, to enjoy uh, the nice time of the year. It is time to move on to eastern Stockholm, the area of Östermalm. Across on your left there is Strandvägen Boulevard with its impressive buildings. Frequently you see ferry boats arriving on the Baltic Sea. Intricate, colourful facades make up for a wonderful contrast to the water. And here is Yugoden Bridge connecting mainland to the greenest area of the city, the so-called Animal Island. The bridge is one of about 60 in Stockholm and as you can see, it allows for exceptional views across the water. And there we are on Stockholm's second largest island. Welcome to Jurgården Island and the Blue Gateway, Blåputten, as this monument here is called in uh, Swedish. This marks the entrance to the Animal Island, which is an area of Stockholm out in the east, where we find lots of monuments, beautiful museums, interesting nature trails to be explored, and many other things to see. The Renaissance-style building is the Nordic Museum, the Ethnologic Collection. Here you see the Vasa Museum, which houses a 17th century galleon ship. It sunk on its maiden voyage just out here in the harbour and was pulled up more than 300 years later. It has magnificently well-preserved details. The Museum of Spirits a few minutes further on is a fun exhibit. Skansen is the world's first open-air museum with more than 160 historic buildings. The ABBA Museum tells you the story of Sweden's most famous pop group and their eternal songs. And last but not least, the Viking Museum, which allows you to travel back in history more than 1,000 years. I'm just so extremely happy that I can be in the middle of my city and be out in a natural forest 
walk for hours and just be outdoors and yet on one of the downtown islands of Stockholm. It's a privilege to have Djurgården, which you can bike on or walk on or even run on if you like that and uh, explore it that way. It is time to catch the ferry boat back towards Old Town, Stockholm, the city on the water. The light, the islands, nature, its history and all the buildings. And still more remains to be discovered. And now the circle comes to a close. We have discovered a city with many islands, many parks, Lots of beautiful buildings and landmarks, its history, its details, and the modern part of Stockholm. Now we're back to see Old Town, just behind myself, the Royal Palace to the right, and the beautiful, colorful buildings along the Baltic Sea on the left. I hope you enjoyed this walk through Stockholm, and it would be lovely to be able to welcome you for real in this city sometime. Thank you so much for being with me.